Hello all you Scorpio minds out there, thank you so much for tuning in. As you can see by the title today, it's gonna be about food photography. But first we need to make the food, of course, and sorry, I just came out of the gym. I know I always come out of the gym, it's just because I love to work out and move my body and move my DNA and after that um, the food tastes so much better, at least for me. So I was thinking either doing like a porridge or a rice pudding. I know these are my go-to things, but I love them so much and it looks so pretty on pictures. So I thought I would go with um, the rice pudding since I'm... I don't know, I just want to eat rice today. <laughs> like I use this measurement cup, it's just like the perfect sizing for me. So I use like uh, one cup of this sushi rice and a little bit of chia seeds. And then I added three times the amount of water in here with eight dates and one cup of coconut shreds. Fill it all in here and then let it boil. It's gonna be a coconut rice pudding with some Oh, chocolate mousse on top. I need to show you, wait. I already made this one this morning because it needs to sit in the fridge for a little bit. It's only avocado, dark chocolate, and a little bit of almond milk. And we're gonna place it on top with, oh, uh, we'll see, maybe some fruit. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna just talk you through it. So while the rice pudding is cooking in the background, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about food photography here. First of all, if you wanna take great pictures of food, your food needs to be good, so it's, uh, it would be good to look into food styling as well. Me personally, I love to, or I start by just scrolling through Instagram and looking at pictures that I really loved, and then I try to recreate those. It's a really, really good thing to start like that, because then you just get a feeling of what looks good and what doesn't and what you like, and um, yeah, I think everybody does that. Like You can get some inspiration from everywhere and then just pick out what you like and make your own composition out of it. And then there's also the thing about colors. If you combine opposite colors like blue and red or something like that, it just looks so much better. And if you're using fresh fruit and veggies, it just looks so much more appealing than just like a sauce where everything is mixed together. So it's really about experimenting and really about what you like and what you want to transport in your images. And there's so many great ways to take awesome pictures. You can have like a super light background, you can have like a super moody, dark kind of feeling. So you can just experiment with everything and see what you like. Yeah, it's just a journey, like every photography or every creative business, it's just about doing, 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 and over time you get better. When I look at my first pictures I took like two years ago, three years ago, like, I wouldn't post them today because it's just awful. But back then I thought it, it was good. You're gonna evolve over time, so don't stress out. Just, if you love it, just keep on going. And as I said, get some inspiration, try different things, try different locations, uh, experiment with the light. I personally, I love to shoot with daylight since it's just so soft and the colors are so rich. But you can also shoot with strobe light or with um, any other artificial light. You just need to see what works best for you and um, it's also the easiest to shoot with daylight since it's pretty much perfect already. With studio light you need to experiment a little bit more, you need to use diffusers in order to make the shadow super soft. Is there any equipment you need? Yes, of course, you need a camera. I'm using the Canon 60 with an 85mm lens and for me it works perfectly. There's some people who love to shoot with a 50mm lens, some photograph with a 100mm. So again, it's just about experimenting and uh, what kind of style of photography you like. This is not a macro lens, so you, if you want to get really close into the details, you need another lens. But this just works fine for me right now. And again, you don't need like a super expensive camera at first. You can start by taking pictures with your iPhone. It's, it's good for a start, for Instagram it's enough. If you want to get a bit deeper into it, you could uh, just buy a starter Canon pack like the Rebel series, they're pretty good. And then if you want to start a business out of it, I would really suggest in investing in a good camera because it's gonna be pretty much your business. The camera is your business, but it's not really about what camera you're using. I mean, it's a tool and you have to know what your tool can do, but you can also take pictures, awesome, awesome pictures with a not that expensive camera. The next thing I would recommend is definitely a tripod, like really, you have to have one when you wanna really get into food photography. 
because you can just mount your camera on the tripod, see exactly what you're photographing and then you can tweak things, the background, the props you're using and you exactly see what you're photographing without holding the camera in your hand and going back and forth and then uh, you see a different angle and stuff like that. So get yourself a tripod and it's also super handy when it's a bit cloudy, a bit dark, just as today. And you can also bring the exposure time up without risking blurriness or just shakiness of your hands. The next two things pretty much go hand in hand. There's one thing, it's a diffuser, which makes your shadow super soft. I will show it to you once the rice porridge is done. But yeah, you really, you really want to get one of these. And of course a reflector. This one is white, so it bounces back the light. So it lightens up the shadows. And you can also get a dark one if you want the shadows to be richer and darker, which is awesome for moody food photography. Cool, anything else I want to say? I think that was pretty much it. If you have any other questions, please make sure to let me know um, down below because <laughs> for me, I'm just doing it every day. So for me, it's pretty much uh, a no brainer. But I know that some of you guys are just getting into it and want to know more about it. So um, please let me know all your questions and I can do like another video of it. Um, cool, let's just get, go ahead with the food styling. Keep in mind that I'm not a professional food stylist. I just love to cook and make my food look as pretty as I can. And as a food stylist and food photographer, you need to be kind of creative because sometimes you just need to do stuff that doesn't really come to your mind. For me today, it's uh, I don't have a pipe bag to um, make my chocolate mousse look pretty, so I'm just gonna use parchment paper, fill it in here and then cut a hole. We'll see if it works, I never tried it, but I, I think it's gonna work. And then for the rest, you're just kind of doing whatever pleases you, whatever feels good, whatever looks good. The thing you do is more like a personal choice because it needs to look good for you. First of all, you need to decide what you're gonna be making. Like for me it's rice pudding and then you need to decide in what you're gonna display it in and I decided to use these super cute jars and I love jars because you can layer them and then you see all the cute little layers and everything displayed. And since spring is approaching I got myself some strawberries and I love the color it's so pretty so red. Cut them into little cubes and then place them at the bottom Taking the rice pudding I've been making. Oh no. <laughs> yep, that happens as well. You're gonna make a mess, but you're gonna clean it up, so it doesn't matter. Some kitchen towels are also great just to clean up the mess you made so that there are no disgusting streaks or anything in your jar because you want to have everything neat and clean. I picked two jars because then the picture doesn't look too empty, too odd and you don't have to fill them the same way. Like I put strawberry in here, then rice pudding here and here I'm gonna put rice pudding and then some strawberries. And in this one I'm also gonna put some apple cinnamon granola I made the other day just to give it a bit of texture. I love to combine different tastes, different textures. And it's also gonna look good on a picture because then your eye is just drawn to like every layer and wants to examinate the whole picture. Kinda looks like chocolate ice cream. <laughs> I like it. Let's do the same thing with the other. The basics of the jar are now down and we're gonna build the set and then after that I'm gonna decorate the jars a little bit more but I don't want to like, shove them around all the time and then the decoration is just falling apart. We do have this super cool photography table which I use often, not always, because we also have super cute countertops and uh, beds which I love to use. And yeah, you basically just want to build a set which kind of tells a story, which leads the eye to the thing, to the food that you want to display. Now, 
I always set up my camera here so that I can look through the seeker and see exactly what's happening on here with the same depth of field, the same lighting, the same angle. Here's the part where I come in with my diffuser because I don't like the shadows, they're just too harsh and I'm gonna place it. Okay, this is a bit tricky. Just gonna place it right here where my set is and then it's already a lot better. chocolate so it's gonna look a little more exciting after that as well just need a drip here just need to wait a second here's the finished image this is the finished set so what exactly did I do here now I explained the thing with the camera that you have to look through the seeker in order to see what you're exactly photographing then I used this light card, this bounce card, to bounce back the light that's coming in from here to here. So you can see that it gives, I hope you can see it, but this is with the bounce card, with the light card, and this is without. It's just a whole lot darker on the left side. And then I used my diffuser over here because I didn't like how the shadows were looking in this area here. So if I remove this one, shadows and a light it's just gonna be a lot harsher and also with the food styling i just added a little bit more texture with the granola with the chocolate drip um and one last thing i did to tweak the light is close one half of the curtain i don't want the whole set the whole food to be illuminated and when the light's coming from from the front it can look super flat and not that appetizing not that appealing so I love to have um, backlight or side light, which is always good, so that the shadow is giving a little bit of shape and form to the glass and everything just looks deeper and richer. If you want to style your food, it's always good to use products and things you're actually using while cooking your dish. I used uh, there, there. Some coconut flakes because I made the rice pudding with coconut as well. And as a decoration, I used uh, the granola and a chocolate because it's just a component of it all. If you want to use, like fruit is pretty much always okay if you just put it on the side, but if you're making spaghetti with the tomato sauce and once of a sudden there's, I don't know, grapes, it looks a bit weird. So make sure to stay away from products that have nothing to do with your food. And um, yeah, that's, I think that's it. It's, uh, I'm gonna show you the picture straight out of camera and then I, how I edited it. And yeah, as before, if you have any questions at all, please let me know and I would be so happy to answer them. But keep in mind, it's always a journey. Like, I haven't finished my journey at all. I, I just like how my pictures look right now, but in a year I might look back at them and say that they're awful. So, yeah, just experiment, just do whatever you like, have fun with it, and um, of course, make super tasty food. And let me know if the tips helped, if you could create some awesome, beautiful uh, food pictures with it. I would be so happy to know. Thank you so much for watching. Um, subscribe if you want to and have a good day!